enamel pins seem at least at first glance to be a much more advanced product to make for your art shop however they're actually simpler to make than you might think hello everyone welcome to our business with ness i'm ness and i'm a professional illustrator today we're going to make enamel pins together I'm taking you through the entire process from start to unboxing. So right before we jump into it, if you're new here and you'd like to see more videos like this, then don't hesitate to subscribe to this channel and hit the little bell. The bell sends you a notification every time I upload a new video. This way you're sure that you won't miss any of my advice. All right, let's go. So this is actually my first time making enamel pins myself. I do have an Etsy art shop, but I sell digital products. So enamel pins really weren't in my plans for this year. But by chance, I was contacted by an enamel pin manufacturer called GSJJ to make a collaboration video with them. Now you may not know, but I actually get a lot of inquiries for sponsor content or collaborations and things like that but I actually refuse most of them. I'm really strict about what I actually choose to take on. And for me, it really has to be something that you would want to hear about. If it's not helpful for you, then I simply refuse. But when I received the email from GSJJ asking me if I would like some free pins in exchange for making a collaboration video with them, I was like, oh. I know that a lot of you have art shops or want to open art shops and a lot of you are interested in enamel pins. But when it comes to enamel pins, finding a good manufacturer is the hardest part. So I thought, what a good opportunity to try them out and we can see together for ourselves what is the quality of their pins. So full disclosure here, they sent me 40 pins for free. I did not have to pay for them and in exchange, I'm making this video talking about it. But we're going to see together exactly what the process and the quality is like. There is no hiding it. I created two designs and they made 20 pins of each, which they sent me in the mail for free, which is great, but I can't really sell them in my shop anyway. So I had an idea for what to do with the pins. I decided to design pins around the theme of cats with the idea that I can donate them to my local animal shelter so that they can do some fundraising with them. There's 40 pins, so selling them at about $20 each means that they can get about $800 in fundraising for the shelter. Yay! All around, just a win-win-win for everybody. So I decided, yes, let's make some enamel pins. So here we are on GSJJ's website. So this company is headquarters in California. However, they have branches all around the US and they even have one in Canada and one in the UK. The actual pins are manufactured in China and they ship for free to multiple countries. So yay, free shipping. <laughs> On their website, you can see all the different options that they offer. Of course, lapel pins or enamel pins is what we're going to be going for. But they also do different things like these challenge coins, medals, belt buckles, patches, wristbands, ornaments, buttons, and all sorts of things you can see here on their website. But what interests us are the enamel pins, of course. So here at the top, if you click on the enamel pins, you can get more details for what they offer. They have some stock pins. So designs that are already made that you can select. But of course, us artists, we're going to want to design our own enamel pins. This is the entire point. They have a nice little video here showing how they actually create the molds and put in the enamel and all of it. And this is pretty fascinating. I watched the video. I was completely <laughs> fascinated. It's really interesting. So I recommend it. And then you have more information about what they offer. So mainly they have soft enamel and hard enamel. The difference between them, the hard enamel is more durable and it looks like it's a higher quality. It's all polished. The soft enamel is a little bit softer as the name says. And also the metal part are raised and the enamel is poured in. So it's a slightly different look. It just depends what you want. The soft enamel is a bit cheaper. The hard enamel is a bit more expensive however they also have a higher perceived value so you can sell it for more expensive too if we go a bit lower we have more of the fabrication options so you can choose your color for the plating different metal colors or rainbow or black <laughs> all these sorts of things 
You also have pin attachments. So, you know, you have these little brass clutch or rubber or all different things like keychain or magnet and <laughs> all these things, cufflinks even. So you can choose the attachment and also the packaging. So standard, it comes in this little plastic bag, but you can also do the velvet pouch or a little box or even backing cards, which is really interesting because most pins on Etsy or all around different art shops are sold with a paper backing card, which usually we have to have printed separately. A lot of people do them on business cards. So they, they order business cards, which they have print their own little design on the card instead of it being a real business card and then they punch their enamel pins through but here you can actually order the cards through the manufacturer so it's already done so that would be great if you want to sell your pins with a backing card like that you can have it all made at the same time you also have more upgrade options that they offer glitter glow in the dark transparent translucent pearlescent and embedded rhinestones if you want to get fancy they have these uh, additional options of course it costs a bit more but you can create some really fancy pins and here right under they explain what their process is now this is what surprised me the most because i thought to create an enamel pin it was kind of complicated and that you had to create all this technical sort of sheet <laughs> but actually you can even submit just a sketch and the design team at gsjj will create the 2d renderings and the technical sheets that the team at the manufacturing plant needs to create your pins so it's actually really really easy you just have to do the drawing part you can submit either just a sketch or a colored drawing so that you can pick your own colors i decided to do that <laughs> the more detailed and finished you make your drawing that you submit then the closer it will look to that when the pin is finished you can even pick the exact color codes which i'm going to show you a little bit later and here at the bottom, they have some more options for you to check out. They have options for like cutouts and sandblast. I'm not sure what all of these things are, but you can look around if you're interested. So let me go and show you where you can see all the color codes if you want to pick your color. So you can go right at the bottom and go to the FAQ and help. And right here at the top, you have a size chart and you have a color chart. So click on color chart and they will give you color codes that you can use. Now, here are the popular colors. It's great that they give you <laughs> which ones people often like. But then beneath that, you have all the color codes and there are so, so many of them. So you can go through all of that and pick the exact color that you want and give them the codes. And yeah, below the Pantones, they have even more different codes. So you can pick your exact colors if you want, but you don't have to, you can leave it up to the team to choose colors as well, if you prefer. Now let's go back and start an order to show you what it would be like. So uh, let's see, we have to, yes, we have to get the orange button, which is at different places on the page. You can see this orange button. So you click and you can start your quote and design of your pin. You have multiple different decisions to make here. So first of all, step one, if you want a hard enamel pin or a soft enamel pin. So the hard enamel has three little dollar signs. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's also more of a jewelry, high perceived quality look. So let's pick hard enamel. This is what I picked for my pins. Next, you have the size. So you can choose the size that you want. I think both of mine were 1.5 inch, but you can make smaller for a cute little dainty pin or bigger if you like. Now your finish, shiny gold, silver, black nickel. I picked gold personally, but pick whatever you prefer. Now the number of colors. So of course, enamel pins are fairly simple in designs and the more colors you have, the more expensive it is. You can have four colors or less for free. So if you're able to make your design with just four colors, this is of course <laughs> the economical option. But if you need more colors, then you can have more colors, but it's a little bit more expensive. In my case, I only needed four colors. <laughs> I made the design so that they would be more simple. This is something to keep in mind when you create your design to kind of limit yourself on the number of colors as well. Otherwise, it's going to be a lot more expensive. So four colors. Then you get to pick if you want glitter. So you can have one glitter, two glitter, three glitter, as many as you like. Well, uh, I don't want any glitter, so I'm just going to do without. 
So next we have to choose the attachment. So for free standard, you have either the military clutch, which is metal or the rubber clutch. If you need two clutches because your pin is bigger, then it's a little bit extra. And then you have other options, the magnet backing, the deluxe clutch, safety pin, cuff link, etc. In my case, I simply picked the military clutch. I thought it would look good with the gold plating. Next, you have to choose your packaging. So standard and free is the poly bag, the little plastic bag. But if you want one of the boxes or the little velvet pouch, it's a little bit more expensive. Let's pick the poly bag. And lastly, you get to choose if you want to add a paper card for the backing. So you either have a choice of no card or a stock card that has the GSJJ's logo on it, or you can have a single side printed card or a double side printed card. There is a setup charge of $65 for a backing card, but after that you can print as many as you like for 50 cents each. In my case, I didn't choose any backing cards, so let's do that. Your last step is to choose your quantity. So this company is happy to take on small orders as well. There's no minimum quantities. However, of course, the more pins you order, the less cost per pin it will be. So this is really where it's worth it to do a, some sort of pre-order to get at least a little bit of quantities in there so that the cost can be kept pretty low. So let's say that I do 100 pins. Okay. Next, they have free shipping. All the options are free shipping, but however, if you pick a longer production and shipping time, they can give you some savings, which is really nice. So if you can do 18 business days for production and 35 days for shipping, you save 20%. And the longest time for production and shipping, you get 30% off. So this is really, really cool. If you have to plan a launch for an enamel pin, I suggest do it well in advance so that you can take advantage of these savings by picking a longer production and shipping time. Let's say that we choose 18 business days. Let's do this one. You get to select your currency. So I would usually pick Canadian, but I want to see the prices in USD for you guys because I know most of you are in the US. All right, so you can see here, you have the mold charge $75 and then unit price for each pin is 251 per pin. With your savings, you end up at $275 for 100 pins. So if we do a quick calculation here, let's say that you are going to sell your pins for $15 each, then you can expect to make $1,500 minus 275.80 that's a profit of $1,200 of course you have to take into account you're gonna have to ship those to your customers as well packaging costs etc so it's not gonna be quite as much but it's still a fairly good profit margin when you have a quantity of about 100 however let's say if we change the quantity to 20 what happens now the unit price is 696 her. So that's a much, much higher cost. I have to say over 100, the prices stay fairly similar. You save a bit more, but still it's not such a huge difference as it does between 20 and 100. Let's say that you do 300. Now it's $2 per. And if you have 400, still $2 per. Let's do a thousand. Now it's 181 per. So I'd say after the 100 quantity, the savings are less and less for a bigger quantity, but it's really worth it here to do some sort of pre-order. You can do either a Kickstarter or you can have a pre-order even on Etsy or on your own website, but gather up some orders first so that you can keep your cost per pin fairly low. When you're all done here, you have two options. You can submit the order directly, the green button. So they will ask for all your payment information and you pay directly or you can submit this as an inquiry and request a free proof. So you're not going to be asked to pay right away. You're going to be put in contact with one of the people in their design department, and they're going to do a proof for you and discuss the different options for your design. If it's your first time making an order for pins, I highly recommend this so you can chat with someone first before paying. But yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. It was so much easier than I thought to order enamel pins. Now it's time to actually draw our pin designs. 
So first, I started by doodling very, very quickly some ideas. This is basically my brainstorm. As I said before, I wanted the pins to be all themed around cats so that they could be sold at the shelter. So I tried out different ideas like this long loaf <laughs> or this cute little cat with wings. This one has a little fart. <laughs> I tried different things. In the end, I really wanted the pins to be both cute but also kind of classic so that they could appeal to a wide audience, different ages. So I ended up shooting this one with the flower crown and this little one with the dangle tail. So I thought this would be a nice little added difficulty <laughs> for the manufacturer. I wanted to see how they were going to deal with this dangle tail. So let's see how they did. So now here I am in Photoshop designing my pins according to the sketches that I already made in my sketchbook. Of course, you don't have to use Photoshop. You can use Procreate. You can even do a drawing by hand in your sketchbook to send in. It's your preference. Personally, I really like to sketch in Photoshop. So that's what I did. You have to remember to make your designs fairly simple. It can have some details in the line work, but if it's too tiny of a detail, it might disappear in the mold. So you have to be careful there. Each color separated needs a line that is completely closed because the colors are going to be poured into the mold. So you have to completely close the lines, make sure otherwise the colors would bleed into each other. So here I'm sketching both of the pins. It was fairly easy since I already had <laughs> my ideas in my sketchbook, but still you have to make sure these things are perfectly symmetrical and this head design. And I fussed with the flowers a little bit <laughs> until I was perfectly happy with it. So here's just me sketching away. All right, so here I'm satisfied with my sketches. I decided to line them with vector lines. You don't have to do this. You can draw clean lines if you want, just by hand. Personally, I like the idea of doing vector because I could change the width and colors very easily that way. I wasn't sure exactly what kind of width of line I was gonna pick or the colors. So I decided to go with vector just so that it would be easier for me to be flexible. So here I'm starting to pick my colors. I ended up changing my mind quite a bit. <laughs> you don't have to make your drawing that you send in quite so exact, but of course, the more exact you make it, then the more similar it's going to be to what you send in. If you send in a sketch, they're going to have to adapt on their end, and you're not sure if they're gonna perfectly read in your mind what you meant to do. So that's why I decided to do a very clean drawing, and I suggest that you do the same, but it's up to you. So here I'm starting on this second pin now. For this one, I used the guides in Photoshop just to make sure that it was gonna be as symmetrical as possible. When you pick your colors for the design, you can use the Pantone codes from the website that I showed you earlier, or you can just pick colors as you like from Photoshop or Procreate or whichever software that you're using and the design team at gsjj could then pick the color codes that match the closest i decided to temp fade a little bit and go with that <laughs> i wanted to see how well are going to match the color if i don't give them codes so i leave them all to them and we shall see soon how they did After I finished the drawing the next day, I did rethink it a little bit. <laughs> I tweaked the colors a bit and I ended up choosing white for this pin and black for this pin. I tweaked the pinks a little bit and presented it like this more professionally so I can send it over to GSJJ. And that was my final design. So I sent this in to GSJJ and I was paired with product coordinator named Joyce and here's what she sent me. So this is the first proof that she sent me. Now, this is what I expected that I was gonna have to create. <laughs> so this is why I thought it was gonna be difficult, but turns out they have design people at the company who put together these technical 
proofs that they can give to the manufacturers to create the actual pins. I didn't select any color codes. I left it to Joyce to select colors that match as closely as possible to the drawing that I sent her. And I thought that she did a really good job pairing. These are colors that I thought, yes, that's gonna look really, really good. And she chose the placement for the clutches and the little dangle tail and all of this. So I asked her to make a couple changes from here and it was really my bad here that I chose a pin size that was a little bit too small. I really wanted it to be a little bit bigger. <laughs> so I asked her to make it a bit bigger. And then also I thought that this chain was very, very long. It's as long as a tail. So I asked her to make it just two little loops. So she sent me back this second proof with a few changes. So this pin is bigger, which means that she had to add another clutch. There's two now on the back so that it could be properly secured. And I'm really glad there was an expert to point this out <laughs> and add this to my technical proof because as a person who has never done enamel pins before, I wouldn't have thought to add another clutch, but clearly it was very needed. Now also the tail has been shortened and this was perfection so i gave the okay on that and it was ready to go to the manufacturing plant and that was it for the design process it was as easy as that now all i had to do was wait to receive the pins and since i didn't pay for them i didn't get to choose my shipping options which honestly was fair enough they picked the 18 days production time for me so i received the pins in just under three weeks which i thought was really cool it was very fast and Here's what came in the mail. And today, so exciting, I have received my enamel pins. I can't wait to open this and show you how the final pins look. All right, let's go. So the company is located in California. However, the pins themselves are manufactured at their factory in China. So they came from China, but the shipping was quite fast. Actually, I received them in about two weeks and a half, something like that. And considering that shipping to Canada can take a long time, I was surprised how fast that was. This box is packed very tightly <laughs> with staples and everything. There is no opening that box accidentally in transit. All right. So I'm opening it now. There's some bubble wrap. Let's get this out. Woo! All right. So inside there's more bubble wrap and we have the two pin designs. They're packaged separately. All right, let's do this one first. <laughs> I'm so excited. These are my first enamel pins that I've designed. All right, and just a little baggy with more staples. This is packaged very securely. <laughs> Definitely no water could get in there. Okay, and each of them are packaged into oh, into little baggies. This one just fell out. Oh my goodness, can you see this? Wow, these look amazing. Look at the back. It's gold plated. It looks so beautiful and premium. So I was wearing this on my lapel. <laughs> Oh, this is so beautiful. The colors came out really nice, exactly as I picked them. This. Wow. All right, so this is the first one. I'm so excited. All right, let's see a few ones because I know that with enamel pins, it's possible that some of them are a little bit different from one another. So let's check like six or seven of them and see if we can find any that have defects or something. This is very important to check when you get enamel pins. All right, this is good. Perfect. Perfect. I don't see any defects on any of these. They all look Perfect and beautiful. Look at that. So beautiful. All right, I can't wait any longer. Let's get the other one. <laughs> all right, I'm just putting all of this on the side here. Let me put this one back in a little baggie. It's all protected. 
I have 20 of each. So there's quite a few of them. All right, get this other one. Let's get these. Come on now. <laughs> Wow, this looks really great also. Oh, yeah. The little dangle tail, look at that. It's so perfect. Ah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find a good way to like Wow, these ones are a little bigger, so they come with two at the back to like properly secure it on you. And it has the little dangle tail, which technically that's like an extra piece of enamel with the gold backing. And then they, they made like a little hole and they attach it with a little chain. So it's a whole thing. Wow, the colors also look great on this. I don't see a blemish on that thing. It's perfect. Let's pick some more and see if they're all the same. They're all gorgeous. Wow. I'm surprised how these are like all exactly the same. Like I know they come from a mold, but I heard that enamel pin can have little variations between them, but these all look copy paste they all look exactly like my design there's there's no variation this is really good wow okay <laughs> i'm just saying wow and wow all over again <laughs> i don't know if this is like super engaging or something i'm just i'm just so happy with my little kitties <laughs> which technically they're not mine because i'm giving them away to our local cat rescue so i have 20 of each and I'm going to give them to the cat rescue so they can sell them for fundraising efforts. I think they're going to sell them to about $20 each or something. That's what I'm going to recommend to them at least. And so that's going to give them quite a big check, I think. Thank you so, so much for GSJJ to make this possible and sending me these beautiful pins that we're donating to the cat rescue. Awesome. All right, so final verdict, GSJJ, really, really good. Smooth process, easy to use, great customer service, and absolutely beautiful, high quality pins. 100% recommend. So here we are. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you want to make your own enamel pins, go in the description below and I will leave you the link for GSJJ the manufacturer that I used in this video. I had such a good time designing my first ever enamel pins and I want to thank again GSJJ for sending me over these 40 free pins that we will be donating to the local animal rescue here. So let me know in the comments, are enamel pins something that you're interested in? Do you have an art shop? Do you want to add enamel pins to your product offering soon? let me know but in the meantime that's it for me today thank you so much for being here and i hope you enjoyed the video if you did don't forget to like comment and subscribe to help our small channel grow i will see you again in the next video bye bye <music>